Now we can start pulling pistons. The number one piston has the number one connecting rod. Start by unscrewing the nuts for the rod cap. When they're off, you'll need to remove the rod cap. To do this, you will whack on the end of the rod bolts that are pressed into the rod body. You can use a punch or you can hit the bolts directly if you have a brass hammer. When the cap separates, you can pull it off by working it back and forth and pulling on it. If you look inside the cap, there should be a half of a bearing shell there. If the bearing shell isn't in the cap, it would still be stuck to the rod journal of the crank and you need to pull it off, or it might have fallen. Next, you should slip some protector sleeves onto the rod bolts to keep them from scratching the crankshaft and the cylinder walls as the piston and rod come out. Slip one of the protectors onto each of the rod bolts and make sure they seat all the way. Another little trick is to take two of your longest head bolts and thread them in a little bit by hand and then stretch a few rubber bands across them about an inch or two away from the block deck. You could also use some thin wire or string instead if you want. Next up, you'll need a wooden dowel about as thick as a broomstick and maybe two feet long. You'll want to move the rod journal of the crank to the center line of the cylinder bore and place your dowel on the piston right about here. Before you start beating on the piston though, consider this. While a motor is running, the piston rings slowly wear away part of the cylinder wall and create what is called a ridge. Higher mileage and harder worked engines develop more severe ridges than other motors. Carbon buildup also adds thickness to the ridge of a cylinder, but can be removed with a razor blade. A thick ridge can make it more difficult to bang the piston out. Many people believe that a ridge reamer can be used to cut the ridge and ease the piston removal. We don't recommend using this type of tool. They're difficult to use and don't provide a precise cut. Even if they work, you still have to have a machine shop bore out the cylinder. This leaves only one reliable way to get your pistons out of ridged bores. A bunch of nice solid hits to the dowel in the right spot should have your pistons out in no time. In extreme cases, like with our marine engine, the pistons might be frozen in their bores by a bunch of corrosion. A wooden dowel might not be strong enough for the job here. You might have to switch to a metal rod of some sort and then put some strength into the hammer blows. Occasionally, a piston ring or maybe a piston skirt might break when you're banging out old pistons. This is actually acceptable because you need to consider that to fix the ridge problem, your cylinders are going to have to get bored out and that would mean that new pistons are going to be needed for the larger bores. Back to a regular scenario, when your pistons do come out, the rubber bands or wire should stop it from dropping and causing any damage to the piston or your bores. Then you can slide the piston out. Be careful not to scratch the cylinder walls with the edges of the connecting rod itself. Moving on to the other pistons, sometimes it helps to start by lightly tapping on the cap on the side to loosen it up a bit. This rod bolt had to be hit pretty hard to get it to separate. When your protector boots are back on the rod bolts, you'll want to line up the rod journal with the bore center line again and bang away until it pops out. If you have to hit the piston really hard to break the rings so that it'll pop out past the ridge, the rubber bands might break or a piece of string or something, so you might want to have a friend there ready to catch it so you don't cause any more damage than necessary. Here's a close-up of one of the rod journals and the damage that was caused by running an engine with a spun rod bearing. This crank had been machined undersized in a previous rebuild, and the damage was so severe to this rod journal that this crank couldn't be saved by having it cut. As the pistons come out, it's nice to keep them in their proper arrangement according to how they were installed in the engine. A two-liter bottle rack that you could get from a local convenience store makes a perfect container for four, six, and eight cylinder engines. Put some labels on the side of the container that match the cylinder numbering of your engine.